before we take a look at delegate concept, we are going to take a look at static variables. Now going here in our player class, our health variable is public. And in order to access this variable, we need to go here, that is access it in another script. We need to create an object, so player p is equal to new player, so player. And now we can simply type p dot health and we can access this variable right here which is public so the point here is that we need to create an object from this variable or excuse me from this class and then type p dot health in order to access this health variable now we don't need to do this with static variables i can simply delete this all of these lines of code and go back here in our player class and simply type here public static that is all what we need to do so public static int health now we saw a moment ago that we needed to type player p is equal to new player so player like this and then type p dot health and access our health variable with a static variable we don't need to do that we can simply use the name of the class, which is player right here. And now I can simply type player, so player dot health, and I can access the health variable, which is right here. This is called a static variable. And a static variable is an instance of the class. That means that we don't need to create an object out of this class in order to access this variable. So simply type player, which is the name of the class right here, dot and the name of the variable and we can access that variable. The same goes for functions. So we can also have static functions. So here I can type public static void print something like this and I can also type here, so I can go here and type player, so player dot print something and the function would be executed. So anything that we put here would be executed. We don't need to type here player p is equal to new player and create an object from the player class and then type p dot print something so on and so forth. We don't need to do that. With static variables and static functions, simply type the name of the class, so player dot, and then the name of the function or the name of the variable. Of course, if your function, or excuse me, the class has another name, so here we have player, maybe you have warrior, or you have ball, or you have weapon, you can simply type weapon dot, and then access the static function or the static variable. So here is a static variable and here is a static function. So this is about static variables. It's not too hard, it's not complicated. Simply add static, so public, static, the variable type, the variable name, and then you can simply type the class name and the variable name and access that variable the same way with the function. So we don't need to create an object. And I repeat again, there is no need to create an object. Simply use the name of the class dot variable name or function name, and then we can access those functions or those variables. This is only for static functions and static variables. Now that we know how can we use static functions and static variables, let us take a look at delegation. Here I have created a tester class, which you can create simply by right clicking here in our Unity editor, right click and then go create and C sharp script and simply name it tester. That is all what I did to create this script. First, I'm going to create our delegate and the event and explain everything what is going on. So in order to create a delegate, we simply type public delegate void and now we can name our delegate. So we can name it however we want to. So I'm going to type here print, for example. And now I'm going to create an event which we are going to use to subscribe to that delegate. So here I'm going to type public static event 
and we need to name it print because that's the name of the delegate. And here we are creating the event. So now we need to give it a name and the name will be print. Of course, you can give it whichever name you want. So give name. Here you can type any name for this variable because now this is a variable and you can name it however you want to. And I'm simply going to name it print. And I put it to be static because now we can use tester.print and access this event. Now what a delegate means. A delegate basically means if I have a task and I don't care who will execute that task. If I have a company and I have 10 workers and I have a task and I say, who wants to finish this task? Who wants to do this job for me? And I don't care who, who that person is. Anyone can subscribe or take that task to do it. So anyone can say, I will, I will, I want to do it. I don't care. That's delegation. The point is that that task gets done. So how can we do that? Well, we subscribe to these events by using functions. So if I go here in my script and I can create here void and I can simply type some function, so some function like this. And here I'm going to type debug.log and I'm going to type handling the event. As I said, we are going to use this event right here to subscribe to this delegate. In order to subscribe, we are going to go here and we are going to type tester dot print, which is the event and we type plus equals. And now we are going to assign a function. So here I can simply type some function. This is it. This is all that it takes in order to subscribe to this event and be the delegate. So what this actually means is Let's think of this as an email list. So this is my email list right here. And here you have subscribed to that email list. So now you are, you are a subscriber to my email list. I have you on the list. And if I want to send you an email, I will simply, well, send you that email. And here I can type print like this and I will send you an email. Let's see that in action. As I said, here we are subscribing to that event. So we have subscribed this sum function and we are telling here that this is the function that will be executed when we call this event. And now in the start function, because this is the function that is going to be called when we run our game, we can test if this print event is not null. So here we can say if print, so print is not equal to null. What that means? Null means that basically it has nothing in it. Nobody subscribed to this event. So if it's not equal to null, meaning that we actually have somebody that is subscribed to this event, we are going to call this event. So here we are simply going to type print. And this is how we call that event. We call it as a function. So simply call print, open, close parentheses. But the point here is that we are calling this print event from the tester class, but we are going to execute this function in my script class. Let us take a look at that. So here we see handling the event, and this is what is going to be printed in the console. We don't have that here in the tester class. So notice now when we go here, and in the console, I'm going to clear the console. And here on the game object, you also need to attach this tester script. So don't forget to do that. My script and tester need to be attached on the game object. One other thing that we also need to do is here in our script, we see that we are calling our tester or we are subscribing to our event in the start function. And also here in the start function, we are calling this event. If you remember, we have tested the awake and the start function. The awake function will be called first and start function will be called after that. Now, the point here is we don't know if this start function or this start function will be called first when we run our game. 
So we might not subscribe to this event and we call it, but we don't execute it. And in order to avoid that, instead of start here, I'm going to type awake because this is the first function. Awake function is the first function that's going to be called. And we have tested that if you remember. We have printed in the awake and in the start function. And first we saw printed in the console debug.log from the awake and after that from the start function. So in the awake function, we are going to subscribe to our event. And now again, make sure that you have attached both these scripts. And if I run the game, we are going to see handling the event printed in the console. This is the whole point of our delegation. The point is that we are calling the event right here, but we are executing this function right here. That is because we have subscribed to this event, excuse me. And this is how we subscribe. We type tester dot the event name because we set it to be static right here. And we type plus equals and the name of our function in order to subscribe to that event. If we want to unsubscribe, we type minus equals. This is how we unsubscribe. So again, let me go back to the example of an email list. So this is my email list right here. This print event is my email list. And think of this as a pop-up window asking you, do you want to subscribe to my email list? You have subscribed because here we have plus equals. That means that you have subscribed with some function to my email list. Now, when I want to send you an email, I'm going to check if I have somebody in my email list, meaning if my print is not null, if somebody has subscribed, do I have anybody in my email list? If that is true, then send that email and then you will receive that email right here. This is just on top of my head, an example, how I can explain it a little bit more easier so that you understand delegation. Practically, we let somebody else do the work for us. So as I said, here we have this event. For example, if this is a player class and we want to inform any script that the player has died. For example, we have a separate score script that's counting the score, but we don't want that script to count the score if the player has died. So let's say this event is named player dead. And here also we type player dead and name that event. And we subscribe that in our score script. And we test here, for example, we test if player is dead or something like that. We will have a variable for that. We can have a Boolean variable is alive. So for example, bool is alive. And we will type something like if is alive is equal to false, meaning that our player is dead now, then we would inform. So inform the delegate that the player has died. So died like this. And here is the, this is some of the uses for our delegation. And then any script or the score script that is subscribed to that event will know that our player is dead and it will stop counting the score. This is some of the uses for which we can use our delegation. Again, delegation enables us to let somebody else do the work for us. And this is how we do it. We type public delegate void and we name it. This name is up to us. We can name it however we want to. And this is the event for this delegate. And we declare an event the same as the delegate, but we give it a name with, because this is a variable. And usually we are going to type it as a static event and then give it a name. And in any script, we can subscribe. So of course, you will build your own logic. We will see examples of this in the game. So don't worry. If it's not clear 100%, you can post a question here for this lecture or wait until we begin creating games where we are going to see examples of delegation, which will make it more clear. Continuing my speech in another script, in our case, my script, 
we subscribe to that event like this. And when we call this event here to execute, the function that is subscribed to that event will be called and any code that's inside of that function will be executed. This was in short about delegation. Again, don't worry. We will encounter this in our game development and explain it even more with better examples and everything will be clear.